All right, what's going on YouTube? The moment has arrived, Huang in a Hidden Cup 4 qualifiers. If I remember correctly, he also played the Hidden Cup 3 qualifiers. His opponent will be running an up-and-coming German player who was the second place uh, player in uh, the German tournament that was hosted by Viper very recently. So he's a very, very talented young German player. And he's going to be the opponent for Huang over here. Here is the Civilization draft. We will have uh, Saracens, Italians, Japanese, Aztecs, Malians, and Byzantines available. For Huang, Mongols were sniped by running. Um, what am I talking about? This is running side, and this is Huang side. I have no idea what recreation means over here. What I'm... What I can maybe imagine is that there was some issue with their draft, and they pretty much had to recreate the draft that they did. But that's not something that we should worry about. So Teutons were uh, Huang's first selection. And uh, then Portuguese, Vikings, Mayans, Huns, Khmer, and Tatars. Um, the home maps are Slopes for Huang and uh, Gold Rush. So as you would expect, land maps from him. Running, picking islands, exactly, that's what I said. You know what is coming when you're facing against Huang. So you will pick islands and you will pick hideout. Probably the two maps where it is the easiest to defend against the Hoang Rush. So um, here is the civilization ban from running. Anyone expected anything else? You obviously ban Celts against Hoang. I think Hoang probably knew exactly that Celts will be banned. Uh, Hoang is banning Spanish himself, which is a reasonable um, ban over here as well. Because if you think about the fact that conquistadors and an early castle um, in a defensive position can stop a Hoang Rush, that's reasonable. Teutons were the first pick of Huang, and what you have to keep in mind is that um, if Celts is the best civilization the Huang uses for Huang Rush, Teutons is probably the second best. If I remember correctly, in King of Desert, uh, I think Huang played in King of Desert 3, at least in the qualifiers, but I firmly remember that he was not available, not able to get Celts, so he's going to use Teutons. So... We'll see what Hoang can do. Obviously, Hoang is good at um, pretty much one thing over here. He's sort of a fan favorite, but he's one of those players that does one thing, but he does that very, very well. We'll see what he can do over here. As we jump into game number one, running will be playing Malians in purple on the left side in Arabia, and the right side is going to be Hoang playing as Portuguese in blue. And honestly... Portuguese is an interesting selection over here for Hoang. I actually expected that to be the pick for uh, Islands, so we'll see what Hoang is gonna do. And <laughs> look at that! Okay, okay, I have to talk about this. At 26 seconds into the game, Hoang asks, Can a lame? Okay, just imagine this for a moment. You're up against a player in a tournament, and the other player asks, can I lame? And you're like, hmm, maybe he's coming for a lame now. Oh, man. I mean, yeah, we, we got used to players not reading rule books. However, that is just so weird. And at this point, running is probably well prepared that Hoang is going to lame him. Or maybe, you know, maybe Hoang just wanted to be polite and he's like, can I lame you? And then running is like, oh, yeah, you can. You never know. Anyways, speaking of laming, it's nearly impossible to lame running spores. Both of them are very, very much at the back of his base. And I'm not going to lie. Um, the map generation gods are favoring uh, running over here today. Like, big time. Stone at the back, gold at the back, and an easily evolvable base is the dream scenario against a player like Huang. That being said, Huang is able to lame two uh, piggies away from his opponent over here. And we'll see if he's going to be able to lame a boar as well. He's not supposed to be able to. Like... These are so, so far at the back that uh, running should have no trouble blocking them. Um, so, yeah, running has basically the perfect map over here. And I wonder if Hoang knows where his opponent is at. I think he's looking in the wrong direction, Hoang. That's not the way to go. He sees the primary gold, but... Uh, why are you looking in the corner this much? That's not the way place where your opponent is gonna be. Like, I understand what he's thinking. There is the... Um, Huntables and there is the secondary gold, so obviously your opponent either is here or here, but usually the players aren't that much um, far in the corners, so running is going to have a safe move 
on his boards, he's not going to lose any of them. Anyways, Huang was able to snag two um, piggies from his opponent over here, and one thing I want to point out is that Huang's map is actually pretty reasonable as well. This is a rather vulnerable map. He's also got a goal at the back, as a stone at the back as well. In fact, these are one of the more defendable map generations that I have seen in Hidden Cup Arabia. Oftentimes, uh, it is a lot more open. Speaking of that, in the past, I have been criticizing Hidden Cup Arabias, especially Hidden Cup 2 and Hidden Cup 3 Arabias, of being very, very inconsistent whether or not they are super open or volleyball. I feel like for this event, they did a much, much better job with the Arabia. Um, I'm not going to say I'm a perfect fan of this script, but I feel like this is a very, very balanced Arabia map generation. And so far, we haven't seen any super unfair maps for either players. So, yep. Yeah. And as much as I was criticizing Hidden Cup 2 and Free Arabias for being uh, quite inconsistent in terms of volatility, I think that um, so far, from what I've seen, Hidden Cup 4 Arabia is um, an absolutely balanced and very, very good map script so far. Anyways, uh, we are going to have uh, a Brax over here from Huang. We know that it's going to be a Drush FC. So let's talk about why Portuguese could be viable here for a Huang type strategy. In case you're new to competitive age vampires, and you haven't heard about Hoang. Hoang is a player that does one thing basically. In every game he plays, and that means a couple thousand games already. I don't know the exact count. He's probably about 5,000 games played by now. He does the exact same thing. He makes a Drushfast Castle into Knights and a Siege Workshop, Mangonos. He doesn't have a good economy behind that, but he's just so, so aggressive and he's so devastating with that push that... This can be tough for even the best players out there um, to handle. So this is actually very, very tricky to defend against. And honestly, as I have mentioned before um, in other casts of mine, he basically created this strategy. So as gimmicky as this sounds like, this sometimes is actually a reasonable strategy. The problem is that this is the only thing that Hoang knows. And everything else for his gameplay is just much, much weaker. So if he's unsuccessful with the Huang Rush, he's just going to die, basically. He needs a very, very messy game. Otherwise, he is going to be in trouble. So no surprise about this one, Drush FC. I would like to point out that the fact that he has stolen two pigs is actually helping his Drush FC here quite heavily. And he also has seven on berries, so I think he wants to skip doing farms over here. So why could Portuguese be a good civilization for this one for uh, Huang? Well, I guess the main reason of this one is that um, you want to have the gold discount on the units. Although I'm somewhat surprised we're not seeing slabs from Huang, or at least I don't remember slabs uh, being on the draft. And he's going to isolate one villager over here. Running, weren't you prepared for this man? I mean, that's the only thing that you have to prepare for. It's literally the you had one job scenario. Anyways, it looks like um, running wants to play Man at Arms over here. He didn't lose a single villager, which is fine. But as I said, I think I kind of feel like he got caught. He got caught off guard a little bit by those militias, and um, now it's going to be Man at Arms for uh, running. But we'll see what he's following those men at arms up with because the thing is that the men at arms now will be able to bash through walls very, very easily. But um, that being said, it is still going to be relatively easy to wall behind that. Now, you have to make sure that you don't overpick those berries, and Huang is going up at 27 villagers, grabbing Loom for himself, brings back the militias, which I think is the right thing to do. Even if you. Don't kill the mana tarps over there. You are going to be good enough at, uh, you know, lowering their HP and overall weakening them so your villagers don't die that easily to them. These are Dark Age boss side walls, and that actually is one of the reasons why a Drushfast Castle is no longer as strong as it used to be. Because um, the boss side walls are much more fragile now with the lower health. So Huang needs to keep repairing this one. And in the meanwhile, he moves in with the militias, unable to find the villager kill so far so Huang on the way to fuel age I think he, if he reaches fuel age he's gonna be fine because um at that point he's gonna get the extra HP on the side wall the problem that Huang is facing right now is that he is nowhere close to having enough food to go up and more importantly 
this berry is going to be overpicked. You can see that in this moment, the berry is gone, and unless Huang, rea Huang reacts immediately, which he doesn't, Ranin could just run in with the men at arms. Oh, that's actually a scary scenario for Huang to be in. And if this was the old patch, even like before the. Um, what is that? Anniversary patch. This would be a much, much stronger play for Huang because um, the Dark Age was hold a lot longer. Now, this is a really troublesome. You know that Huang um, doesn't really care about his eco right now. Like, you know, he does one thing. He does that one thing every single time. So, whatever you do, Huang is going to try getting up to Castage over here. But here's the problem. He's sitting on 24 food. And from this point on, now that you have knocked Huang out of his... Um, I'm not going to say daily routine, but that's basically it. Now that you have uh, completely rendered Huang's original and only strategy inoperable, Huang is probably losing like 300 elo. And uh, last time I checked, quick walls won't protect you against archers. And it's also, as I said, Huang is doing one thing and he does that very well. But anything else he does, he's doing it in a very low level compared to all these high level players that are competing in this tournament. So, for example, in this scenario, you can make an archer, but it's not going to help you out because you're already behind in terms of archer numbers. So this should have probably been a skirmisher to deal with the archers, but that's not going to happen. And guess what? Four archers is more than one. So in this situation, you don't start making archers because it's too late sort of a thing. And uh, the thing is that Hoang is not going to get to Castlage anytime in the foreseeable future. And that means that um, running is going to have a happy, happy life over here. Also worth noting that if you take a look at running, he's getting fletching for his archers, takes the hill, and Huang has already lost seven villagers over here. Oh man, oh man. I was somewhat skeptical about the men at arms push working out for running, but what was actually pretty interesting is how low Huang's food it was. That was very, very surprising for me. That uh, Huang's food count was that low. Um, look at that moonwalking villager. That was beautiful. So... I would have expected him to be able to do a 27 um, plus 2 Drush FC with a little bit more food in the bank, but he was dangerous though. He was like at something like 200 food. And now, running is going to realize, hey, I'm denying this wood line, where else can my opponent get wood from? If you take a look at running's perspective, he doesn't know the exact base layout of Huang, but it doesn't really take a genius to guess that if uh, Huang wants to have another wood line, that wood line has to be over here, right? So, yeah, Huang is probably going to have that wood line exposed very soon. And Huang, as I said, uh, he is uh, without fletching. Actually, he does have fletching over here. So he's going to be able to hold. But it's 34 to 28 villagers overall. And uh, running is getting a market up. So he's going to balance at Zico and click into Castleage here. Huang is going to be nowhere close to Castleage. And do you know what running is going to do? If... Um, he reaches Castlage, he's gonna do the exact same thing that Huang would have done to him. Go for a couple of crossbows and for residual shop, mangonel, and just try to finish off the game that way. Indeed, Castlage is on the way for running. He has been playing this one pretty clean. The main problem that Huang has in tournaments, I believe, is that he is awfully predictable. And as long as he's able to pick Celts, he's an extremely strong player. But without Celts, he's much, much weaker. That's the other thing as well. If he plays in a tournament, there is just one ban in the tournament, their opponents will always ban uh, Celts. That being said, I'm somewhat surprised that he hasn't chosen something like Slavs, for example, which would have been a fairly reasonable selection for him. And there is scaleboarding as well for running, so he's actually going to do a Hoang rush on Hoang here. So, he will get the stable out, get a couple of knights in, and uh, in the meanwhile, he's even able to get to the back of Huang's woodline because Huang wasn't paying attention. Huang was microing these archers over here. And as I said, um, basically anything else that Huang does is not on the level of these players. And running is a pretty talented, relatively fast player is. He is as well. In the German tournament, he lost to Jordan, I think, 5-1 in the final best of nine. So that feels a bit of like a stomp. But uh, I feel like, as I said, running is an up-and-coming player. He has a lot of room to improve, but he's slowly improving. And he's becoming more and more of a factor in tournaments. Uh, 
Currently, it's mostly medium to like small to medium sized tournaments where running is actually a factor. But um, now, as you see, he's trying to qualify for uh, bigger events. And as I said, he's a good overall player. He probably feels best uh, when it comes to arena, though. Like, um, he was very, very active in arena based tournaments. Arena is not a map uh, in the Hidden Cup map pool, so that is not going to help him out over here. Nice was over here by uh, running. And uh, running is just going to send two watchers forward. Oh, running. Running into the opponent's archers with your forward wheels. Why did you send these wheels if you weren't willing to send knights with them? Oh, that was very, very potato from running. And that being said, that voyager is still alive. By the way, you always send, well, not always send, but in the most cases, you send two voyagers forward because even if the first one gets picked, you're gonna have a second one, and also you're probably gonna have to repair your mangonels. Um, the thing, however, is that Hoang is still nowhere close to clicking up the castleage over here. He's floating a lot of gold. Typical Hoang eco. So Hoang's eco balance is basically non-existent. And as I said, his game style and play style is basically like going full aggressive with that castle age push. And he's extremely good when he's able to get there. So whenever you're playing against the Hoang in a tournament, what you have to prevent is him getting to that critical castle age push. Potentially you can do this by applying quite a lot of fuel age pressure. And that's exactly what we have seen from running with the men at arms. Obvious, as I said, the changes in the strengths of Dark Age Wars um, heavily nerf Huang in this situation. Running could have actually killed that Voyager with the Knight before it goes down. But this, what running is doing is basically the Huang rush in Castle Age over here. Knights and Mangonels. And uh, now Huang will try to buy himself up to Castle Age here. There is a quite enormous hole on the wood line. And. As I said many times, uh, Huang is a good player, so even without the Huang rush, he would probably be something like top 200, 250. But um, when it comes to dealing with players that are in the top 50-ish, um, he's not there with gameplay skills, so his quick walls aren't that fast. Uh, and uh, what happened? Uh, apparently, my game died. That is somewhat disappointing. Interesting turn of events. So, it seems like my definitive edition has decided to stop working over here. The real question is if this was a GG already or not, and we'll have to figure that one out. Uh, give me a moment to restart this one all right attempt number two i had to completely restore the recorded game and let's see if we can actually get uh, something out of this um for now uh i think the critical part was at 24 21 let's hope my game does not crash again and it does which actually means a very, very disturbing uh, corrupted game file, so or at least corrupted recorded game file, or potentially a GG over here that for whatever reason wasn't stored in the game. We can't tell for sure, to be honest, but um, it seems like my game has uh, crashed once again. Um, this is the recorded game that was provided by tournament administration, so um, it is what it is, I assume that this is uh, the end of the game then. I can actually do one thing to double check if this is actually the end of the game. But let's hope that we're not uh, going to miss anything over here because as I said, um, it seems like um, this game file has been sort of uh, corrupted. So, 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 so. Based on the game length uh, available in public recorded game databases, uh, it seems like... Uh, 
yes, 2421 is the official length of the game in every accessible database. And uh, let me just show you this one. So, um, here, this is what you can see. Um, this is actually a database uh, for recorded games. Um, called AOE2 Insight that actually creates a video of the entire game. And what you see here is that 2421 is the exact game length. And at 2421, there is the GG from Hoang. So this actually is a resign from Hoang. And for whatever reason, the recorded game file seems to be corrupted and that causes Definitive Edition to crash. I apologize for the inconvenience, but um, from what you have seen over here, it uh, should be clear that uh, this was an actual GG and we didn't miss anything. So I did my best to prove you that it's not like, I don't know, we missed half of the game and there this actually continued. And let's be honest, Huang was not even remotely close to clicking up Castle Age. Um, he already lost a couple of villagers, so this was definitely a game over for him. But uh, I think based on that database, you can also see that um, Hoang indeed tapped out. Unfortunately, there is a corrupted game file or recorded game file. Sometimes it happens. Anyways, Malians are gone for uh, running and Hoang lost um, Portuguese in this one. So what I'm surprised about, and this is what I want to talk about uh, for a moment, as I kind of have to relaunch my definitive edition because um, as I said, the recorded game crashed it once again. So, is that he isn't selecting Slavs, and I would think that if you go for a Huang Rush, Slavs is one of the premier sieves to do that with, because of their siege bonus. And uh, if you don't have Celts available, I thought Teutons, Slavs, were the top two civilizations to do that with, and it seems like um, Huang wasn't thinking about, um, about Slavs. All right, so we have uh, game number two up. Um, Hoang's home maps are uh, Slopes and Gold Rush. So let's get into uh, Capture Age over here. And uh, we will be able to jump into Slopes. Apparently, this is going to be Hoang's first home map. Running is leading 1-0. And we're going to have running as a Japanese in purple. I like that he pulled the trigger on such a save over here. Because Japanese gives you a lot of versatility on this map. So the cheaper mills allow you to potentially mill maybe even both of these pawns on here on the outside. And you also have a very, very nice man at arms opening, which could allow you to potentially push your opponent off from berries or berries um, from these um, outside pawns. So I see the game plan here for running. Hoang is playing Tatars, which for me is a little bit for surprising civilization selection over here. Once again, I'm not 100% sure what uh, he's planning with this. This map is tough for Huang to play because this map isn't really suitable for a typical Huang strategy. He's going to try doing it most likely. Um, but uh, as I said, I don't know how much he's going to be able to get out of that. Technically, this map is suitable for a Drush FC play. The problem is that as much as he was um, dying to the Men at Arms opening in the previous game from Malians, he would even more so die to a Men at Arms opening from Japanese. So... Um, the Japanese player is going to have faster attacking men at arms, uh, and running could also probably spread his villagers out um, to the pawns. This is actually a very, very sloppy mistake from uh, running, though, as Hoang tries to lame that boar. Um, running apparently notices that he might even be able to just de-aggro the boar by, um, you know, building a building on it. So, on the other side, I want to talk about how sloppy it is from running to send out the villagers here at the beginning, especially one villager. Like... When you send two at the same time, that's fine. But there was one villager that was just leading the way before the other two arrived. And that villager could have been killed by the scout. So you don't really want to do that. And now running is like, okay, whatever. You lame me, I'm going to lame you. But running isn't um, successful at laming either. Even though he will keep trying. Which means the scout is going to be awfully weak. But I think that this is actually one way you could actually try playing against Hoang. Because um, by laming away his boar, he, you can actually delay his castlage. And uh, once again, I feel like running is a little bit sloppy over here. Distance is too big between the boar and the scout. And the boar seems like it's going to de-aggro. Like, yes, you have to wait a little bit. Hoang coming in here with his scout to try and block that. And let's see if Hoang is able to 
stop this lame over here. Theoretically, he should be able to because running has nowhere to go. And that's gonna be a nice block over there. That's actually beautiful from Hoang. And uh, all he needs to do is just let that boar hit that scout once again. And it seems like he's just going to kill that scout, which also works out. The boar is going to walk back. Obviously, this delays the boar a little bit, but it's not like Hoang uh, needs that boar immediately. He can go for the other boar over there. It seems like he's going to get housed in the process, though. So he was so busy trying to block that, that eventually he's going to get housed. And uh, maybe he's going to run into his opponent's TC fire. And it looks like he's going to be able to avoid it. So um, what running went for is one of the two ways that you can play this one. Uh, you either go out for a mill first and the lumber camp later, and you chop down the straggler trees to be able to get wood for the lumber camp. Or you go for lumber camp first and go for the mill second. And it seems like um, running... Um, does running know about his other boar, I wonder? Oh, he doesn't. So this is why he's sending out all his voyagers to food over here. That was a little bit sloppy from running. Now he sees the other boar as well. Hwang has a full HP scout here. So technically, Hoang could try blocking a villager that is coming for that boar. And I think that's the plan for him. Uh, in the meanwhile, we already have the militias coming in here. For Hoang, taking the tango, so it's gonna be a drush FC. Quite a lot of TC idle time over there for Hoang. He needs to force drop the food. Uh, and uh, Hoang will actually try laming that boar. It's a very, very late lame over here. Hi. This lady, I don't know what she's trying to do, but she's trying to gate this scout over there. She was waiting for the opportunity. Running is also missing on two turkeys, so this game is getting as chaotic as it is possible. Hoang, uh, that's kind of a nice lame over there so far. Behind this one, running has quite a lot of idle eco, and it looks like running is going to get away with this one, and that scout isn't going to be able to get that block in. Hoang, at the end of the day, is going to potentially have one extra boar here. That's actually going to be a very, very late boar. And remember that he didn't even bring in his second boar. However, running is going to be down by one boar. The thing, however, is that at least running is able to compensate with shorefish and hunt over here on the outside. So as much as this looks like uh, it's a bad situation for uh, running, it's actually not. And in the meanwhile, Hoang kind of gave up on this drush because he was too busy. Um, laming the boar. Now, Hoang isn't really known for his uh, actual APM. Like, he's definitely one of the lower APM players out there. So, he's usually focused on doing one thing. This is why you see that when his micro is Manganos, he's got no full eco. Um, it's also not a great spot to kill that um, boar at, but it is what it is. Now, here's the problem. Um, running is going to start making men at arms, and um, right now, Hoang is wide open. So, if he was fully walled, I would say, okay, whatever, um, you're gonna be at least able to defend against that, but that's not really the case, and as I said, losing that boar isn't that big of a deal for running, who was able to compensate with the four tiles of shorefish and potentially a deer overall. In fact, in Arabia, if you would lose your boar, what you would do is compensate by pushing in deer. Here, you don't even have to push in the deer. This one lonely militia will be accompanied by the scout. And once again, Hoang is going up at 23 villagers, which means that this is not going to be a uh, fast castle play from him. It's, it's impossible that that is going to be um, the case. He's bringing two more militias now, but I would hardly call this a drush because this is everything but not a drush. This is way too late for that. And it looks like running is going to potentially check out this pawn first. CV Hoang is out there. Man at Arms is just coming in for him. And I like the move that running just says, okay, whatever, I'm going to leave two deer over here because my opponent is lurking for me over there. I'm just going to fall back home. Let's not go super greedy. That is that is what uh, running says over here. And now the metarms will be coming in. And those are Japanese metarms. Japanese metarms are extremely dangerous over here. Running is missing all the eco upgrades, but he already has an archer range up and man at arms already inside Hoang's eco. I don't know what Hoang was trying to do here. Like, I don't think that he himself even knows what he was up to in this game. Because this wanted to be, like, lame into nothingness, basically. Now, as I said, that pause side was gonna go down awfully fast to the Japanese man at arms. Look at this. The pause side will just melt. One villager repairing may not even be enough, or it's going to be, like, barely enough. Man at arms upgrade coming in here from Hoang, but by the time he gets the upgrade in, um, the archers will be able to deal with this one. And uh, 
Uh, it looks like Quang is gonna be able to keep that Palisade wall alive, so he's gonna be fine, but he has free idols uh, during this. Um, that being said, running is without the eco upgrades as well, so it's not like running has a massive eco lead over Huang right now, but he still has the hunt and he also had the shorefish. If you just look at the stockpiled food count, it is much, much better. Now it looks like uh, Huang is gonna make a couple more men at arms because he lost like two or three here to the archers and he seemed like he's actually making a couple more to defend. But look at this resource count. Like at this point, running has archers, Huang does not. And it's not like running is actually far away from Castle H here with all that food. So um, it seems like the risk for running has been worth it here because Huang wasn't able to deny those resources. And at this point, running could really be thinking about Castle Age already, to be honest, because um, he's got the better army over Huang. So Huang right now is forced to defend. And uh, Japanese man arms, as I said, will be really scary to fight against over here. So... Man at arms goes down, nice micro over there from running. And as I said, Huang does one thing and he does that very well. But if you put him into a situation where he has to do something else, he's um, going to fall apart completely. Like, he's not a bad player, but he's definitely not a top 50 player when it comes to doing anything else. He's probably like top 100 at least, but I would say probably 100 to 200 in terms of uh, actual gameplay speed kills when it comes to doing something else other than a Huang rush. And running for now, he's going to play this one safe, he knows exactly he's got the advantage, he even goes for the defensive tower on this gold mine, just to make sure he doesn't lose Voyagers to a sudden counter-attack, but when these Voyagers drop off the food from the hunt, I think Huang is, or running is gonna have enough go uh, food to go up. Uh, he doesn't have a market, so he's not gonna be selling stone anytime soon. But yeah, he might just idle that range for a moment and then consider going up to Castle Age because his opponent is heavy on skirms. Once again, the exact same thing that uh, running could do is just go up to Castle Age, make a stable, get knights out, and do a Hoang Rush. That's exactly what he needs to do. So just Hoang Rush, Hoang overall. So, really, this extra food that running is able to grab is just insane. And it seems like he's even going to take um, Hoang spawned over here. So, he's going this one on this one very, very greedily. And Castle Age on the way. Most likely a stable is going to come in. Knights forward Siege Workshop. We'll see what Hoang can do against that. But once again, this game seems to shape out very, very similarly to the previous one at the end of the day. The men at arms of running knocking out Hoang from his rhythm. And uh, behind that one, running was able to establish a much, much better eco. And will be able to beat Huang to Castle Age by a massive margin. So, yeah, Huang even has to buy some wood so he can make that stable. But it's gonna be Knights, Forward Siege Workshop. And we will see what Huang can do. Huang actually doing some crazy eco balancing over here. And it seemed like he was floating so much gold that he was just able to brute force buy himself up. Even sold all of his stone. But it's still a one minute difference into Castle Age. That being said, at least Huang is gonna be potentially reaching Castle Age. And that means that if he's getting pushed back or pushed with Manganoles, he's gonna be able to make his own Manganoles. Which is extremely important because Huang's Manganol micro is actually pretty nice. So one of the better things in his gameplay is his actual micro with Manganoles and Monks in early Castle Age. But once again, running Sfuriko here is gonna be crazy good with the Shorefish, with the Huntables over here. And running isn't really getting punished for that at all. Um, the double bit axe is very, very late though. I like the defensive towers as well from running. It's going to keep those archers away, so this counter attack is gonna go nowhere. And it looks like running isn't going to settle with just one stable, he's gonna be doing two. He only has one archer on the field, so um, going for a crossman upgrade obviously isn't worth it for him. And he just wants to play with double stable knights. And where are the forward vultures? There will be forward vultures here. Um, that's 100% sure. One of the more decent things here for Huang could be that he could go camels. And the camels would allow him to hold against the knights for a brief moment. And that could be something to consider. Running, jumping into a tower in time. Nice reaction over there. So Huang wasn't able to 
get any damage down on the Storm Miners. And Knights will go right to the right side of Hoang's base. And it seems like Hoang is going for Knights. But the problem is that he's going to get outnumbered in terms of Knight numbers. And also he's going to get beaten in terms of quality. So it's only plus one defense. Um, there is no bloodlines on either of these Knights, I believe. But Hoang is up against plus two defense. And Hoang is up against the superior eco as well. And that's something that's also worth considering. Archers like these will be picked off. Um, these were cleaned up by this knight, and it seems like this group of archers will not be intercepted for the time being. And Huang is adding a couple of cav archers, now making camels and the monks. At least in this game, he's up to, able to get up to castle age, so theoretically, he still has a chance. However, you have to keep in mind that Huang is not on the offensive, and like his entire playstyle is built on actually being on the offensive, and compensating for the poor eco management for with uh, a very aggressive push that devastates the opponent's eco as well. So, yeah, what I could imagine for Hoang is that indeed he kind of has to play with camels at the beginning to deal with the knights. And in the meanwhile, running is playing 1TC only as well. And running seems like he stopped making knights. So, it seems like Hoang is going to live for a brief moment. Um, Voyager KD is 2-0, uh, so running kill 2 Voyagers from Hoang, but at the end of the day the Voyager count is even because running had to idle his DC for almost 50 seconds, and every 25 seconds means 1 Voyager, so this is actually 2 Voyagers difference, and running kill 2 from Hoang, and that basically evens the Voyager count out. But, as I said, the main problem for Hoang is that I don't know where this game is going for him, like, he's sitting back chilling with his army, and... Eventually, running is just going to outboom him, I would think. Although running is also playing one TC only, so this is a very very passive game, and that's so weird. Um, because if you just look at the overall way this map looks like, you would think, oh yeah, it's super open, it's super aggressive. But guess what? Players are just camping within their bases. That's a nice raid over there by Hoang. Picks off one Voyager, but then disengages. Another Voyager goes down. That was actually a very, very nice raid from Hoang. Picks off uh, a third kill as well. I have to say that this was um, the best move so far that Hoang has made in this tournament. He's going to have a couple of camels coming in, but he will need more than a few camels. And... Uh, that's another range, so we may be seeing Cav Archers, which normally is an ideal composition. The main problem that you're having with um, the Cav Archers is that you need to tech into them, and that takes quite a lot of time, even though you get the free tumbling with Tatars, which is immensely helpful. Um, but still, you need to get the Botkin, you need to get Husbandry, you need to get um, Bloodlines for them, and your opponent might just brute force um, his way through you with Knights, so I feel like you kind of have to... Um, get camels, running deletes that camel before it gets converted, and it looks like um, running, or Hoang actually wants to go triple range cav archers over here, followed by monks. That's quite a lot of monks out there, and as I said, one of the things that running doesn't have is a better eco than Hoang, and that's actually something that gives a nice little shot over here for Hoang. He definitely has more chance in this game than the previous one. There's the forward siege workshop from running. I would think he's thinking about something like scorpions against the cav archers. He's playing this one safe, making sure he doesn't lose his knights, and then he wants to push with scorpions, take one decisive engagement against his opponent, and I feel like whoever wins that engagement is gonna win that game. Bloodlines coming in on both sides, there is going to be ballistics as well for Huang, even though his resources look relatively low for ballistics, and there is also an overchop, I think there will be an overchop here, this is not an overchop yet if you take a look at these two tiles of trees, because they are diagonal and they are adjacent to each other, so this is not a hole yet, but it is going to be an overchop I believe very soon, like right in this moment. Wang is going to start warning himself up a little bit more. Army numbers are rather close, and the Cav Archer numbers are steadily increasing. Wang is going to grab Ballistics right now. Here it comes. I feel like if Wang actually mixed in a couple more Camels, he would be having a much, much better time. Like, he's got one Camel! What prevents you from adding five more Camels to deal with the Knights? That was actually a nice one. Let's see how many conversions he can get. Uh, gets a couple... But there is a response and that camel could also get converted. As I said, this is the decisive fight. Uh, I like that Huang's monks are actually healing here. That is actually a very, very nice added benefit of having the monks on the field. But guess what? This is not enough. And as I said, it takes a lot of time to tech into cav archers. And uh, 
Von decisive engagement can finish the game over here and I feel like we're getting close to that. Huang may have gotten like one or two conversions with his monks and that was apparently um, non-satisfactory. Mangano gets a big hit on top of the Cav Archers as Huang is trying to take that Mangano down with Voyagers. But from this point on its full desperation, monks go down to the Mangano. Eventually, um, the Voyagers will kill the Mango, but now from this one, running has a 10 Voyagers lead and uh, running, slowly running over his opponent over here. I really wonder why... Um, Huang wasn't actually paying more attention or not really paying more attention but focusing a little bit more on camels because early camels would have made this push much much harder for running. Huang tried switching into cav archers but that was a too early switch. Um, he didn't have that much time and he saw the amount of knights that he was up against so he should have known that he's not really gonna have the time to just uh, get into cav archers. That being said he stores out Running's push here very nicely. The problem is that running is no longer forced to push. He knows exactly that he's got the upper hand and he's gonna be playing with two town centers now compared to just one from his opponent. He has a 13 Voyager's lead. So um, before this engagement, the Voyager counts were even and it seemed like if running isn't pushing, Huang is gonna be able to get a decent army of Cav Archers out. Now it is going to be um, an eco lead for running. That being said, Cav Archers in large numbers can still be pretty devastating on such an open map. So, running hasn't won this game just yet, but um, it depends on how many good mangonal and scorpion shots you can get against those cav archers. Running, Huang is gonna have to have some crazy, crazy good cav archer micro. He can't afford to lose numbers, that's for sure. Um, he's gonna have the tar heal bonus, which is something that you wanna consider though, as he eats one shot over here. And those knights do have plus two defense and the bloodlines. Cav archers right now holding, however. Honestly, this is a first for me. I haven't seen Huang playing with cav archers so far in my two years of casting age vampires. But, uh, well, so far he's been controlling his units quite nice. The problem that he's going to be facing is that his eco is now way worse than running's eco. It's a nice downhill attack. Takes down one mangonal. And, uh... Uh, there's still more scorpions and knights coming for him and the problem is that with cav archers you have to keep running running and running as the opponent's name is and if you can't do that you're just gonna get destroyed so um against cav archers that's exactly how you want to play you just want to uh, push the opponent's base whoever is making the cav archers and make sure that he's forced to fight because cav archers are not units that are meant to fight directly they are meant to hit and run hit and run and uh, in the meanwhile it looks like Running is just going to start killing Voyagers over here from Huang, uh, who is running out of this gold mine and for whatever reason decides to take this gold mine to get his Voyagers slaughtered. Now it's a 20 Voyagers lead. Running is down to 3 military though. If you take a look at the army value, it's 370 combined resources for the army of um, running and 1.6k for Huang's army. So theoretically the eco doesn't look great for Huang, but he's got the military numbers advantage and that's the thing. When it comes to Huang, once he gets the military advantage, that's where he starts being dangerous because this is the moment for Huang to bring the Voyagers and potentially drop a forward siege workshop and start the Huang rush, just like he would have done before. It looks like running is uh, thinking about teching into skirms maybe. Uh, running will be on uh, three TCs now and those TCs protect his key resources. He even has... Uh, um, defensive towers over here and honestly for a moment I thought that uh, is there a university yeah there's a university that the university is going to be there for ballistics but um, eventually it's ballistics first but I'm tempted to believe that guard tower could be something that we could see here and guard tower would be a nice way to defend against uh, the mangonels surprising that Huang is not pulling the wheels for a uh, mangonel pushed uh -huh, uh -huh, here it is and this is still dangerous for running because this is the entire thing that Huang's strategy is based upon. Gaining a temporary military advantage and then pushing you down with siege workshops. And running is doing the right thing right now. He's trying to get Voyagers on stone and trying to get a defensive castle because that stores out a Huang rush. Um, same thing can be accomplished by guard towers as well, but he actually needs guard tower. Watchtowers will not be satisfactory. And Huang will pick off a couple of Voyagers over here slowly coming back in this game to be honest there is the guard tower upgrade he's losing some cav archers but the value that he's getting is actually pretty nice a lot of idle time on running Zico, 
And in the meanwhile, running is gonna have a couple of knights in here. Huang should make like two camels to clean this one up, but he kind of has to make or just dispatch these cav archers to clean these guys up because otherwise he's going to lose a lot of villagers on the wood line. Now it's guard towers, and Japanese guard towers are pretty cool. And oh, uh, Huang, why didn't he have those cav archers back here? He sent these guys forward, and that is going to mean that he could lose two or three more villagers than he should have had. Also, in the meanwhile, he runs into a TC fire and Guard Tower just absolutely slaughtered those cav archers. It's one, two, three, four, five, six dead bodies lying on the ground. And suddenly, Hoang's army isn't as strong as it used to be. And he's going to make better engrams instead of... Uh, instead of mangonels here. He's got a lot of wood and gold in the bank and now techs into plus two defense. The castle is going to go up for running over there. The problem is that that castle isn't really great at protecting like this part of his base. Wang is behind by 20 villagers, but his army numbers are actually pretty decent. So this is far from over because if Wang can get a good push in with these rams, Mangonos will do very little now against the guard towers. So rams might actually make sense over here indeed. For Huang, and if he's able to start knocking down these buildings, the thing is that a lot of the eco for running could be exposed, and the running is playing a very, very low, like Yasama, early Yasama tower coming in here. Not a tech that you often see in Castle Age, but it's going to make your guard towers much, much stronger, and it makes sense against the Cav Archers. The question is, what are you gonna do against uh, the Rams? And the real answer is that. Um, you will have to try and snipe them with voyagers and knights. So Hoang's number one job here is keeping those rams alive. So he can't actually afford to leave the rams alone. The guard tower is going to go down. Your next step is probably to go for the um, stables. Running wants to break out with knights here. That's actually smart as well from him. He's massing knights because he wants one big breakout where he destroys all the rams. If he just sent out one knight, it would get picked off by the cav archers. What you're counting on in this case is uh, unpopping those knights, like all of them at the same time, eight knights, and they'll be able to melt the rams before the cav archers can kill them. And indeed, running pops them out, they are actually on the wrong side, and that means that their stables are gonna go down. Running is slowly getting pushed back over here, he's got a 24 voyagers lead, but that doesn't mean a lot against Poeng, to be honest. And as I said, this castle isn't accomplishing much right now, stables are going down, and currently... Running is fine. He's not dead yet. There's a mangonel that's gonna take down at least one ramp. Uh, as uh, Huang is gonna have to dive in and snipe that mangonel. However, you also have to consider that this push is getting bigger and bigger. And there is 26 cav archers waiting to start killing voyagers. And th when the ramps finish off with the towers and the town centers, suddenly those cav archers will be there to start killing those. Here is running diving in to deal with the rams. Uh, if you are playing right now, you have to focus down the knights. And uh, running, you can see that he's repairing the tower. And running has done this one very, very nicely. He was waiting until he gets a good critical mass of knights. And just bought himself enough time to snipe down the rams. And running is going into Imperial. The question is, what is he going to do in Imperial? And honestly, my first answer is actually keep. Because it seems like he wants to play tower defense here, now text into Arbalest. So he's starting to get um, the upper hand over here. Oink has very, very little time left here. Um, so, so far the guard tower defense has been working nicely. And I want to point out that running, as I said, he's very, very familiar with Arena. So he's uh, somewhat familiar with dealing with these early castleage ram pushes. Uh, because those could be a thing on Arena. And on Arena, one of the ways that you deal with uh, early castle age ram or, uh, more importantly, mangonel pushes is by guard towers. So the Arena experience comes in pretty handy over here for running. And even though running is losing ground, it's about um, kind of a scorched earth tactics over here. He's giving some freedom for Huang to move. However, he's not giving him enough to really do damage to the eco. So, at the end of the day, running didn't lose voyagers in the recent couple of minutes, or at least not considerable amounts. And the opponent running here is going to be up to Imperial soon, getting Arbalests. And when the Arbalests arrive, as uh, it will soon happen, Mangano is also getting some nice shots out here. A lot of the Cav Archers are going down, and as I said, Guard towers with five villagers garrisoned inside are absolutely no joke. 
So if you take a look at the KD, Huang actually has a negative KD here, because even though his army is actually pretty cool at killing villagers, and he has been doing that for most of the time, the problem that Huang was facing is that the guard towers are killing so, so many cav archers. And uh, right in the moment where uh, running reaches Imperial, Huang is going to tap out. Two games in a row for running, and once again a nice defense against this Hoang Rush, even though this was way less clean than uh, the previous game. In fact, for a moment it seemed like Hoang is actually going to make a comeback, so there were some scary moments for running. But at the end of the day, he is the one grabbing the second game as well in this series. And we are going to play the second home map of Hoang, which is Gold Rush. Now, Gold Rush is one of those maps where, uh, first of all, Huang played a lot on that map. So that's already an advantage for him uh, compared to maps like, for example, Slopes or Bay or Islands. And also, Gold Rush is one of those maps where the Huang Rush can actually be pretty devastating as well. Quick look at the civilizations. Uh, we will be losing Japanese for running and we will be losing... Uh, Tatars for Huang, he's left with Khmer, Huns, Mayans, Vikings. I wonder what his Sif pick is going to be. I think he's trying to reserve Vikings for Islands. Um, hideout might be Khmer. So I am somewhat tempted to say that it is going to be Mayans or Huns in this scenario. So let's jump into game number three over here, which is Hoang's second home map over here. We are on Gold Rush, and this is the first time I'm actually going to see Hidden Cup for Gold Rush, because I haven't seen this one being played in any of the qualifiers before, and I've casted quite a lot of series, as you might have seen. So, in fact, I'm somewhat surprised that uh, we have uh, so many Gold Rush bans on this tournament. Anyways, we're going to have Huang playing as Mayans in blue on the south, and on the north we are going to have a purple for running in Aztec, so good old-fashioned Mezzo Wars is what we're going to take a look at, and it seems like this is one of the more open Gold Rush scripts, I think. Um, in the last T90 tournament, which was a 2v2 World Cup, they also had a much more open Golden Pit generation over there. So, um, there is actually significant uh, intention from tournament hosts nowadays to make uh, Gold Rush a little bit more open, because uh, otherwise it turns into a Drush FC situation, and that probably is the reason why Huang is actually um, using this map as his home map, because this is actually pretty reasonable for the type of strategy that he likes to do. Um, the map itself also has been changed, I think, compared to the matchmaking Gold Rush with, for example, the fact that there is probably a lot more lions in there. This actually reminds me of the early versions of this map in Definitive Edition, where you actually pulled one militia and you just um, walked all the way around, collected all the predators in the middle, and then sent them into uh, the opponent's barriers, deleted the militia, and your opponent was facing uh, against, like, 20 wolves or lions, whichever it is there. So, I'm somewhat surprised. In fact, I'm heavily surprised that uh, we are seeing this many predators uh, in here. Interesting part of this map. The gold seems to be very, very evenly distributed. The hill only has uh, one major deposit, and the rest of them are scattered across this outside crest. This actually is pretty important because oftentimes on Gold Rush, uh, especially in old Gold Rush scripts, there was one hill, and the player controlling the hill was able to defend a very, very easy uh, or very, real, very well defendable position and just control all the gold in the middle. Now that there is an outside rim, um, the attacking player that's like trying to get to the middle is also going to have a little edge and hope to get back to the middle on gold. And also, compared to old gold rush scripts, um, the gold is a lot more evenly distributed, which means that technically it is possible for two players to be both on gold, which wasn't really a case for old Gold Rush scripts. Back in the days, in Gold Rush, if one player was in the middle, the other one was uh, most likely unable to access gold. That being said, Running is going to be pushing Deer over here, walling himself up, and uh, 
Why do I have a feeling that we're going to see a Drushfest castle from Huang over here? This is the map where he's supposed to be able to do this, though. So, if there is one map other than Arabia in this map pool where Huang uh, has a chance at pulling off his strategy, it is this map. Especially with such a hill in front of the opponent's base, you can make the siege workshop here, you're even going to have the, he the high ground advantage. And your opponent isn't really going to be able to fall back to a lot of extra resources because they only start with 4 plus 3 tiles of gold and this 3 tiles is also quite open for running. The stone mine for running is actually pretty reasonable and I just want to check if running knows about this forest because if he knows about that, that's actually a pretty bad wall. And he knows about that forest, so... It is somewhat puzzling why running is walling like this. Maybe he just wants small walls that he can protect. But that's gonna be a lot of time walling. And you could have made a case for just walling like this, to be honest. <laughs> Anyways. Um, we are gonna have uh, the second elephant in uh, for running. And uh, he will be fully walled. So let's see what Hoang is doing. It seems like we're not going to have a drush. And hello there. Hoang is adding a Voyager to stone. So it seems like he wants to evolve and this is not gonna be a Hoang rush, he's gonna try something different. This feels like it could be a naked fast castle into plume archers, maybe even castle drop. I don't know if that's gonna be the case. However, uh, that one Voyager being added to stone is definitely something to think about. The only problem is that uh, running is going to spot that and running spots it and he's gonna know that hey, my opponent is Mayans and he's on stone. What does that mean? It means plumed archers. So, in theory, it would still even be possible for running to just go straight eagles. In fact, I could really make a case for running to go fast castle into triple barracks eagles and see what Hoang can do against that. Because that would be a rather aggressive play and you could see that you could knock uh, Hoang out of his rhythm with some aggressive plays early on. So like triple Barak Seagulls into Siege Workshop and then try to breach this base. Because Hoang is probably going to make a defensive castle somewhere within his base. It is unlikely that you are actually going to be able to castle drop running in this situation. And in fact running shouldn't even allow that one to happen. Anyways, on the way to Fugle Age is uh, running, and one thing I want to emphasize that running, as I said, is a pretty well-known arena player, and that means that he's gonna have a pretty clean, fast castle build overall. So, um, it is actually interesting that... Uh, oh, he's Aztec, so he doesn't need two Voyagers on gold. Like, see, these are minor details that uh, running knows really well, that normally you send two Voyagers on gold, and I was like... Why is he only sending one? And that is because he's Aztecs and he's starting with uh, 50 extra gold. So um, he was confident that Hoang isn't going to be pushing him early on. So he actually went up to Feudal without Loom, which is a little bit risky over here. But it seems like he knows that Hoang is going to fast castle as well. So the real question is, what is um, running going to do when it comes uh, to this fast castle play? So, at this point, he hasn't made a barracks, which means that he's going to be going into Castle Age with Market Blacksmith. Right? Market Blacksmith. I really hope that these minor lag spikes with Capture Age actually disappear at some point. As I said, Capture Age, I have said this many times, Capture Age is still in development, so sometimes there is some performance issues with it. Anyways... Um, Sword Voyager being added to stone over here by Hoang, going market. It seems like it's market blacksmith as well from Hoang, although he's adding four Voyagers in Feudal, which is a little bit too much over here. Also interesting to see that the newly created Voyagers are making the uh, buildings over here instead of actually taking a couple of Voyagers off from Berries, for example, when you have 650 food. Anyways... Uh, running is gonna have a slightly better castle age over here. It is, I think, either 25 plus 2 or it was a 24 plus 3. Whereas for Huang, it was something like 26 plus... No, it, it can be 26 plus 2. It was probably 24 plus 4 or so. Uh, which isn't really polished. So I think he went up a little too early for uh, what is a fast castle, castle drop unique unit type of a thing. We'll see what he is going to be able to accomplish with this. So, running is going to have a slight advantage going to Castle Age, but what I don't know is what running is planning in terms of un unit composition. There is the first barracks for him, 
and we will see if there is going to be another one following. I don't think that with Aztecs you want to get into an archer war with Mayans because eventually our Mayans will just dominate that with Thumbring, they will dominate that with Plumed Archers. So in such a Mezzo war, um, it is going to be about the Eagles at the end of the day. And uh, that is exactly what running is thinking away as well. Also worth noting that when running reaches, Castlech is going to have extra free attack on his own Eagle, which means he's going to be able to potentially take a good engagement against uh, Hoang's Eagle here. It's a little bit too early for him to take this fight right now, but he's going to get the first stab in. And for now, he's playing single Barax Eagles, but even single Barax Eagles is going to help him prevent uh, Hoang from castle dropping him. So... The thing is that when it comes to Eagle Warriors versus Plumed Archers, Eagles should be able to clap Plumed Archers, but it depends heavily on the numbers. Because Plumed Archers in uh, larger numbers, and it's fairly easy to mess them in large quantities because they're so cheap, against lower amounts of Eagles could be pretty problematic for the Eagles. So technically Plumed Archers are capable of beating Eagles depending on the numbers. However, uh, at the beginning of Castle Age, um, the Eagle player should have the upper hand because at the end of the day, Eagle Warriors is something that you can already start creating in Feudal Age or well, those are Eagle Scouts, but you can already start massing your Eagles in Feudal and uh, especially with Aztec bonus, you can even create them faster. Um, whereas for the Plumed Archers, you need a castle and uh, Huang drops the castle right now. He's going to be playing 1 TC, whereas running is going to go for 3 TC boom. So... In this case, running is just going to do a couple of Eagles for defense and he's just going to be trying to outboom his opponent and play very, very defensive with the walls. That is, I think, a siege workshop here on this ridge to deal with the initial plumed archers. There is still quite a lot of um, exposed parts on his base, but I love that this is uh, walled off here on the far left side. This is going to make his base very, very safe. This is, I think, the weakest part of running's base. So that's going to be the most concerning part, but TZ here actually covers a lot of area, so it's going to be more or less safe over there for running. And I think the grand plan for him is that, okay, my opponent is going for plumed archers, I'm just going to try and defend and just outboom him. And that's exactly what running is planning. Um, he is going to have free TCs working for him with Aztec economy, that's actually going to be a very, very nice eco overall. And I was thinking about indeed walling this one off, either stone walls, double layer pass sides or houses. Um, over here just to make sure that eagles can get past or um, what plumed archers can get past and can just get through these walls easily and get into your eco if these house walls are up as i said the only part that is uh, somewhat weak for running space is gonna be this gate but there is a siege workshop over there and that should be able to help as well in that regard anyways here are the plumed archers for hoang and uh, this is the first game where he didn't actually try a hoang rush i guess he wanted to be unpredictable now, I haven't really seen Huang playing Plumed Archers, so I have no idea how good he is with this. I remember that uh, about half a year ago, I saw him against Vivi with a Conquistador mirror on uh, Gold Rush. And he was actually playing pretty decent with that, so... He banned Spanish himself, so he didn't want to pick it. And that means that uh, he's gonna have to settle with another save that has a great unique unit. So it looks like we're going to have a Scorpions over here. And it's actually extremely important for running that he was able to pick off that Eagle Scout. Because that Eagle Scout would have been very useful for Huang to pick off the Scorpions or at least harass them. So running, leaving those free Scorpions alone isn't necessarily ideal, to be honest. But it's free Scorpions getting some nice shots in over there misses the next volley. Another volley that is missed and so far plumed archers have been dodging shot after shot and running once again is playing very very defensive and just booming over here. If you're hoeing right now and you see that your opponent isn't really making a lot of military and you could really make a case for a couple of egos for hoeing. Uh, he doesn't have a brax right now but if he makes two or three egos he could easily skill the, the scorpions and if you do that then uh, you could potentially castle drop running over here and that would be completely reasonable. It's not like um, Hoang is impossibly far away from another castle. He's gonna need a couple more minutes, but uh, he should be able to start pushing Hoang here. In fact, that siege workshop is also nice. It could have been a little bit closer, some round over here. And then the alternative option is that you don't make um, eagles to deal with the scorpions, but you actually make mangonels to deal with the scorpions. 
And as I said, I feel like at this point, um, the way that this game is shaping out and the way that uh, Running is already possessing a 14 Voyager's lead over his opponent, I think that uh, Huang is going to have to try a castle drop at some point. The question is if he's going to be able to secure a position for himself some round over here where he can castle drop. I don't think he's going to be able to deny all gold from his opponent here. That's not really a thing with such spread out gold deposits. So your real chance is dropping a castle some round over here and pretty much just smashing the face of the opponent in this corner. Uh, there is the Manganol coming in here for Huang. 450 is going to be the stone count soon. He upgrades are relatively close for the two players. What is concerning for Huang is that he's getting flat out outboomed over here because he's on two TCs. Uh, credits to Huang for having little TC at all times. So that is something that is, uh, um, I would say, not something that you often see from Huang over here. Let's see what that Manganol can do. Remember, Huang is very, very good with the Manganol micro. That's something that is kind of coming from the um, Kelts gameplay that he is uh, doing so often. And honestly this was a good fight for Huang. he took down i think five scorpions or four of them at least and one mangonel for a price of one tomb darcher and one mangonel and now Huang's stone count is looking closer and closer for another castle and as i said if a castle goes up here who knows what is going to be the outcome of this game so at this very moment Huang actually is in a position to win this game in fact i would borderline say that he's leading he needs to make the right decisions and, for example, not lose all those plumed archers to what could be a mangon and scorpion popping out. Now, running is clicking into Imperial. And that means that the clock is ticking very, very badly for Huang. In fact, there is going to be defensive castle. So, probably running knows exactly that the push will be coming his way. And unless Huang is able to punish in the next one minute or so, um, this game might be out of his hand. Because he's not going to be going up to Imperial anytime soon. And... Uh, Eventually, that's just gonna be Garland Wars Eagles for running. So, running was playing pretty much arena over here. Very, very defensive. Allow the opponent to push slowly, but boom behind that one and then unleash the army. This is what we have seen from running over here is classic arena play style. And you're just booming three TCs, having a little bit of a skirmishes in the middle, but at in heart, you're just booming. And eventually, you're going to unleash the army in Imperial. I already have Chainmail coming in here for running. This is actually pretty nice because he will be able to squeeze in at least Forging, but potentially even Iron Casting before he reaches Imperial, which is pretty important because you want all those upgrades. At least Forging, but preferably Iron Casting in as well before you get into Imperial because in Imperial you will be using the Blacksmith for Plate Mail first. So, yeah, Forging is something that running is going to have to grab uh, pretty soon over here. Nice move over there from Huang, picks off two Vogers. And he seems like he's going to place the castle in the middle. Now, he's clicking up to Imperial himself. And as I said, Eagle versus Plumed Archer is kind of a matter of uh, numbers as well. And we also have to keep in mind that uh, Running isn't having an awful lot of gold in his possession. However, he's waiting for one big death blob of uh, Eagle Warriors. And it is much easier to mass these Eagle Warriors than it is to mass the Plumed Archers. So, the real question for Hoang is if he's going to be able to survive that initial push of Elite Eagles with Garland Wars. Um, plate Mail coming in right now. I think right now Running is waiting for Elite Eagle upgrade and then Garland Wars. That's probably going to be the priority. Here is Elite Eagle and he's going to have to wait a little bit more for Garland Wars. He's almost able to afford a second castle but I think he's going to wait with it a little bit. And potentially drop that castle over here once he's got a little bit of a foothold. Ballistics on the way for Huang. He's still one and a half minutes away from Imperial. The scary thing for him is going to be that that's a lot of elite Eagles. And even if he had the, all the upgrades in Imperial, the Eagles would be scary for his plumed archers. But right now those are Castle Age plumes against uh, soon to be fully upgraded Imperial Age Eagles. Um, they're still missing forging though. So no attack upgrades on those guys. Um, somewhat surprisingly from running there is no point grabbing garland wars if you haven't picked up uh, forging at the beginning so that's a little bit surprising from running but still that's already a lot of eagle warriors and they are going to be super super scary against the plumed archers traps are coming out as well for uh, running and the thing is that these castles have to stand otherwise huang is not going to be able to go for uh, additional plumed archers 
and he's almost up to Imperial, running now will secure this hill for himself, get a second castle up, Mangan will get some nice um, ground attacks over here, and you have to jump into the castle with the plumed archers here, you have the hill, but this is still a lot of eagles, you have to jump into the castle, man, you can't be using castle age plumed archers against Imperial age eagles, that was an awful fight for Hoang, but he's in a tough situation, as I said, um, because running's boom was completely unpunished, as right now he's trying to pick off as many eagles as he can, Bracer is in now, or... Is it? Yeah, Bracer is in. But there is no elite plumed archer just yet, chemistry is uh, just finishing right now. Going trying to repair that castle over there, but there is already a castle coming up for running, and the problem for Huang is that if he wants to make plumes, he can't make traps. Whereas for running, he has a, just a much, much better streamlight production over here. So, five barracks, he can spam eagles from them and simultaneously use the castles to make traps. Whereas for Huang, he needs the castles to produce plumed archers on them. Voyager count in the favor of running over here. And as I said, I feel like running is slowly running away with this game. I had to make that joke, sorry. But anyways... The only thing that I could criticize for him is that he is missing the attack upgrades on those Eagles and they will be so, so valuable because um, you kind of have to chase those Plumed Archers. So every hit that you can deal on the Plumed Archers is extremely important. So the more damage you deal with a single hit, the better. That's actually a very nice move from running. Um, taking a couple of Eagles to hit the Voyagers over here and the Plumed Archers will be surrounded by Eagles. And I think that's the end of the story for Hoang on Hidden Cup 4. He tried it didn't work out, and credits to running for being well prepared, and it wasn't just Hoang rushes from Hoang, but obviously that is his strongest part of the game. He, this Blue Nurture play was alright, but he didn't do enough damage, and as I said, um, running is actually very very good when it comes to just, you know, getting um, a very very good free TC eco up without getting pushed. He's a very good arena player, and this was a dream scenario for him. Not really getting pushed in Castle Age, all he needs to do is uh, just boom and then unleash the Eagles. He did that masterfully. Hoang is going to be out of this tournament after three games. I'm a little bit sad for him, but let's be honest. Uh, Hoang enjoys to play the game the way he does. That is annoying for some experts. And at the end of the day, it is very, very predictable. And when it comes to actual tournaments, um, and when you can actually influence the opponent's... Uh, tournament by you know selecting the home maps that that uh Hoang rush isn't going to be very efficient on and potentially banning Celts for example i feel like um it is a completely different scenario than rated games so with that Hoang is out and running is going to keep its dream alive to get into the main event of hidden cup 4 Thank you so much for watching once again, and uh, hopefully you will check out the other uh, qualifiers that I'm casting on this channel and on Twitch as well. See you next time.